If you've been prompting like this, then you've been doing it all wrong. Now don't get me wrong, this will still generate the image you're looking for, but you're not getting the best results. That's because you're leaving out some very important and specific details, but that's all about the change. Because today, I'm going to show you some very simple yet highly effective tricks to guarantee that you'll write the best prompts and generate the best images. So whether you're a beginner, an intermediate, or even a prompt pro, these tips will surely improve your prompt. Now the tool we'll be using to test this today will be Leon. Leonardo AI. In fact, Leonardo AI is where I actually got all of these awesome tricks and tips. However, these tips are interchangeable and then can be used across the board for any AI generating app. Now to start, the most important aspect of this is clarity. The more these AI tools understand our input, the higher adherence, detail, and quality we'll get. So let's go ahead and then start with the main subject. And again, like I said, these tips and tricks are directly from Leonardo AI themselves. So in this highlighted text, Again, the key though is clarity, and that's why it's so important to make sure these AIs completely understand our input or the prompt that we're going to be providing it. Okay, so then the first thing we'll do, start with the main subject. Begin your prompt by identifying the main subject you want the AI to focus on. I mean, so that's simple and that's obvious is enough. I think by now, everybody knows what a subject is. But then from there, that's where it gets a little bit tricky with what sort of descriptions do you want, but not only that, in what particular order should you put your descriptions or your adjectives in. Does it really matter in what order you have your prompt? Does it matter if your subject is in the front or does it matter if your adjectives or your descriptions are in the front or the back? and vice versa. And the simple answer to that is yes. I'll show you exactly how and why that is right now. All right, so look back over here. Now, specifically on Leonardo AI's page, it says, how do I create better prompts? One important note to always remember is that typically words at the start of the prompt, so there you have it. It specifically says the words at the start of your prompt will be weighted more heavily than those at the end. So let's look at some examples. So look at these examples right here. Say we want to generate a knight on a horse galloping across a stormy beach. But we also want the thunderstorm to play a prominent role and dominate above the knight himself. Any of the following three would be acceptable, but the first would be potentially most effective as the storm prompt feature is first. So here is the example they provide us right here, okay? A stormy night with lashing rain backdrops, a knight frantically riding a horse down a dark beach, all right? So what we're going to do, instead of just reading this article verbatim, what we're going to do is actually test out this method in real time and then see if we can notice the difference that the wording and then the order of our description makes a difference or not. So for that, we're going to head over to my mega prompts database. Make sure to check the links in the description. Now, this one right here is specific to Leonardo AI. However, since this is Leonardo AI, it doesn't matter. A lot of these prompts are going to be interchangeable that you could use across any platform. But what makes this one so special is that it has every prompt, but then the corresponding images that go with it. And then even in this database, you can click the download button and then freely download any image you want. But within each cell or within each prompt, you'll see the images, you'll see the fine tuned model that was created, the alchemy preset, in addition to the full prompt. You'll also get some prompt generators, prompts to generate prompts. But then one of my favorite aspects is the unique keyword section. And that's what's going to be so important today in generating the specific type of prompt you want. And then if I hop back over here to this mega prompts database, now this database base contains over 2000 plus of just purely everything. So as we get deeper into these tips and tricks, you'll notice that once we have a specific art style or even a specific type of artist, Leonardo AI, in fact, many platforms can differentiate between styles of a popular painter or an artist or even a film director, etc. So let me go back over here to this one. And right now I'm in my gallery view to make this simple. Let me go to my grid view. So there's lots of different views to where you can find the sort of prompt you want very quickly. Okay, now we have this one right here. Now this one is quite simple. Here we have the prime example, a Viking warrior riding a horse on the beach. Okay, if I expand this image, you can see we get just that. So I'm back over here in Leonardo AI, and then here are the three images that it gave me. Okay, I just showed you these, but you can get a better idea of what this sort of prompt will generate. But if I go back over to Leonardo AI's help guide, you'll see the difference and variation of their prompt. Right here on this one, you can see that a stormy night is going to be first. Because of that, you could tell that in this prompt, 
the stormy night, since that's the first adjective or the first word, the image will put a lot more emphasis on the stormy night since it's first. So because it's first, the first thing I notice is a stormy night with lightning, with lashing rain backdrops. And then again, at the end or in the middle, we have night frantically riding a horse. We get that. Now look at the difference right here. Reverse order. Instead of putting a stormy night first, this time we put a night at night frantically rides a horse down a dark beach with the stormy sky and lashing rain backdrop. Do you see the two differences? In this instance, stormy night came first, so the dominant subject will be a stormy night, but then again we have the night frantically riding. If you reverse it, a night appears first, so you have the subject, the night, is going to be more of a dominant sort of appearance. But then again, we still have our stormy sky. And then for a third variation, you can see stormy backdrop of rain, night riding horse, dark beach, nighttime. Very simple. So what Leonardo AI says is, when comparing the three images, it's clear that the first is focusing on the storm itself as a priority with bolts of lightning and a longer angle that positions the night as smaller compared to the vista around them. So let's go back over here and I wanted to test this out in real time and see if it did the same thing for me. Okay, so that was the first one. Now let's look at the second one. I said Viking warrior, very simple, on the beach. Second one, I reversed it. I put beach first. I put beach, a horse with a Viking warrior sitting on it. We got what we were looking for, but it might not be exactly what we were looking for. So do you notice that? So it got it right. We did put beach first. So if you look at this image, the first dominant feature we notice is more so of a beach, and then a horse with a Viking warrior sitting on it. If I go back to the first one where it says a Viking warrior riding a horse, you could see that the Viking warrior is going to be more dominant and then much different from this one where the beach is a little bit more dominant. But this is just the beginning. Now let's take things a step further. Now this is where it starts to get a little bit more fun. So now I added a different detail, and that's exactly what Leonardo AI states right here. Add more descriptions to your subject, okay? Expand on your subject by including additional details such as the location or action by including descriptors like colorful or sitting in the park, for example, white cat sleeping inside of a box, it provides more context for the AI to create specific visual representation. So once I hop over here, I did exactly just that. So now this time I put a Viking warrior riding a white horse on a beautiful sunny beach. If I expand the image, we get exactly just that. So the images have been completely transformed and then rearranging the priority of the words from front middle and end, we're going to get this specific image. So I changed a few things up. This time we, I specified I wanted a white horse. So we got just that. And then I also specified I wanted a sunny day. Okay. Now let's go back over here to my personal feed and then look at this image right here. Okay. I put a Viking warrior at night riding a horse down a dark beach with a thunderstorm and heavy rain backdrop. So what do you notice first? I notice my Viking warrior. He's more in the middle. Okay, here's the image again. Again, Viking warrior. He seems to be sort of the dominant figure with the lightnings in the background. It is stormy and it is raining, but I first notice my Viking warrior. Now again, when I reverse it by putting violent thunderstorm in the beginning, our image is going to take a different turn like this one right here. I put a violent thunderstorm thunderstorm in the beginning, and then I put a Viking warrior riding a horse. The difference in the actual storm is exemplified. So do you see the difference? Here's the first one with the night being first, okay? The thunderstorm, I could tell it's there. It's really not as dominant. But then this time, when I put the violent thunderstorm with rain first, another image like this one, then you can see the big difference. Now we get that. A violent thunderstorm has a more dominant display. So again, back to Leonardo AI's help guide, here's exactly what it says. It says, one important note to always remember is that words at the start of the prompt are weighted more heavily than those at the end. And then as we go back to their comparisons, you can see the images we looked at a little bit earlier. And one key paragraph I really like right here is this one right down here. It says, a good idea with prompting is to start small. The longer sentences get, the less likely it is the model will accurately understand. So when you're first starting, test it out with some shorter style prompts. But then here's the key thing that you want to keep in mind. Like I always want to reiterate the magic of Leonardo AI and their prompt tools. Let's just say we did that. We started with a very simple prompt like this one right here. Okay. Viking warrior riding a horse on the beach. Go ahead and then just copy this prompt. Okay. So I have it copied up here, but you never want to forget two things. The button that you see over here in the top left-hand side, these magical little dice. Now select improve prompt. 
Now we're putting everything in Leonardo AI's hands. Now we get just from a very short one sentence prompt to this whole entire thing right here. So let's see what they could come up with. I'm going to change my fine tune model to Albedo Base XL. I'll leave it on dynamic. Let's go ahead and then select generate on that one. But then if I choose prompt generation, now I'm going to enter a basic prompt yet again, a Viking warrior riding a horse on the beach. I'll select ideate and now it's going to give me four other prompts and four other ideas same characteristic that I can use instead. Okay, so now we have these four options we can choose from. A fierce Viking warrior, adorned in fur and leather. Let's generate this one, number one, okay? Since we have a fierce Viking warrior in the front. And then let's also do number three and then number two. So number two will have as the sun sets over the horizon, but then number three will have in the midst of a raging storm. So if I hit generate on these first three, let's look at the differences based off of the order of the keywords we're using. So while these are thinking right here, let's take a look at the images it just made from us with improved prompt. Now we have a new Albedo Base XL as our fine tuned model, but then look at these images right here with the simple improved prompt button. This is pretty cool. So again, just like that, with their improved prompt, you could get a different series of images as well. All right, so now we're back to our prompt generators right here. Now check this out. Here is the first one, a fierce Viking warrior adorned in fur and leather. Okay, so if I click on this image right here, the first thing that stands out to me is a fierce Viking warrior adorned in fur. Okay, very good job. And if I look at this image right here, it's definitely dusk, and then the sun is setting over the horizon. And all of these images right here, it's definitely doing that. But then the third one, in the midst of a raging storm. Since we put that first with the Viking warrior shortly thereafter, the first thing you'll notice is when I look at this image like this with the waves and then the dark sky, there is an emphasis on the storm. But since the Viking is right after that, he's also prominently displayed right in the middle. So this did a pretty good job with these as well. Another thing to keep in mind that Leonardo AI says is, now, how do I get more detail? Okay, simply put, users will get more detail out of the more they put in. So we have the two differences right here. Man sitting on the chair playing violin versus old man sitting on the chair playing violin by mountains. Now that might seem obvious to you. A more descriptive prompt will give you more of what you're looking for, but you may be surprised on how different it really is. Okay, so let's look at these two right here, okay? How to get more detail. The ones I have highlighted right here. You'll see the difference in sort of like this one right here where we have a man sitting on the chair playing violin versus old man sitting on the chair playing violin by the mountains. It's the same concept. We're gonna try man sitting on the ledge of a skyscraper versus man in his 40s sitting on the ledge of a skyscraper at dusk Hong Kong. Because remember, that actually goes into this little tidbit right here where on Leonardo AI it says, can I create style through reference to popular concepts? And in this case, it says you can. It says, users can indeed create a style by referencing popular works or individuals, such as in the style of Van Gogh or in the style of Starry Night Painting, okay? This can also be movies, games, and even studios. So for example, here is a studio style image of a hot air balloon race, which clearly emulates the style of the famous animation movie studio. Okay, so that's very helpful to keep in mind. So let's come back over here and let me copy both of these prompts in Leonardo AI and then first look at the differences here. But then we're gonna try out the other piece of advice by specifically mentioning a popular artist or a film director to see if it can really determine specific unique keywords like film directors or artists. So back in Leonardo AI, for this one, I have my prompt up here, man sitting on the ledge of a skyscraper. I have photo reel turned on, and then I have cinematic. Let's generate this one. And then let me also paste in the more specific one where man in his 40s on the skyscraper, and then I specifically said Hong Kong. Okay, so here's the first one. We got exactly what we were looking for. A man sitting on the edge of a skyscraper, not bad. And now if I actually go to this one where I put a man in his 40s sitting on the ledge of a skyscraper, and then I specifically put Hong Kong. Now the cool thing to keep in mind about this is that I got all the above. The man looks like he could be in his 40s. He's sitting on the ledge or he's against a ledge in the skyscraper, and then I put Hong Kong. So then you have the backdrop as Hong Kong, but look how smart the AI tool is. Since I put Hong Kong, the majority of the population in Hong Kong is of Asian descent. So since I put Hong Kong, Leonardo AI assumed that the person I wanted was A, a man in his 40s. But since I put Hong Kong, 
Now it's going to give us an Asian man. So listen, according to the statistics and the knowledge of demographic out there, Leonardo AI did get it right. And that's where it comes in handy. So if I reduplicate this prompt, but if I put a different ethnicity, instead of just putting a man, I put maybe something like a young man in his 20s of Latin descent, I'll get the same sort of image, but now I have a younger man and a different ethnicity. And so I did it with this image right here, but I didn't put a different ethnicity. I only replaced a man from his 40s, but now I put in this one a man in his 20s. You could definitely tell a difference in age. But let's change it up. And now let's put young man in his 20s and Latin ethnicity in his 20s. Let's go ahead and then generate this one. Okay, now this one is done. Let's take a look at this one right here. Look at this. Okay, perfect. So we have everything is the same. Hong Kong is the backdrop, young man, and then he does look like he's of Latin descent. We have this one again right here, all the same qualities. Now, before we wrap it up, let me show you perhaps one of the most impressive parts of this. So again, and we have more tips and tricks, so it does recommend utilizing modifiers like specifying digital painting, 3D render, etc. But to be quite honest with you, that's where the presets, the alchemy presets yeah. comes in. I stopped really specifying those sort of adjectives because now with these presets, I could select like bokeh or cinematic, fashion, film, etc. Even if I change up the fine tune model, you know, if I open this one back up right here, now I have 3D render. So that's what makes Leonardo AI so special is that it gives you these alchemy presets to determine what you want. And then as we scroll down, we could see a few more paragraphs that really provide some very helpful information. But down here at the very bottom is what I was talking about earlier today. Okay, explore magical words. Research and discover specific words or phrases that can have a transformative effect on the generated art. Okay, one famous example is art station. Okay, including such magical words in your prompt can yield unique and unexpected results. Let's try that over here before we wrap it up. So with that said, I'm going to go back over here to my mega prompts database and I have some of these I want to specify right here. So talk about some very unique and cool keywords. That's exactly what these are right here. But one of the ones I like the most is this one right here. I love the way this turns out. And here is the unique keyword right here. Actually, there's a few of them. Using this whole thing, glowing pastel, purple, phosphorescence, okay? The combination of these keywords makes this amazing silhouette style of an image, okay? But another one I really like is gonna be this one right here, okay? We have spiral verse. That's pretty cool. And then we have electroluminescent and then even photoluminescence. So those specific keywords will create these specific sort of images. And then, and then I'll also head back over here to this database and then go to the specific AI art style ones. So on this one, this is where we have specific artists as well. I open this one up right here. This looks pretty cool. This is gonna be Peter Lick. If I put Peter Lick, I'm gonna get an image that looks like this, okay? And then if I go back over here to Sebastian Salgado, I'll get an image that looks like this. So let's see if it can do just that. Let's go to this Peter Lick one right here, okay? So I said portrait photo by Peter Lick. But before we do that, look at the image we got for the Viking warrior using the glowing phosphorescent silhouette with the black background. This did a pretty good job. And then again, we also have this one over here, although the Viking is missing from the horse. I think this did a pretty amazing job as well. So you get that difference in the look of an image. And then I did the one for the spiral verse fractal neon light of the lion again. And then look at this one I got right here. This is pretty amazing stuff. And then to wrap it up, we'll go back and then check it out. But I did choose this Peter Lick one, okay? So I did portrait photo by Peter Lick. And so now back over here in Leonardo AI, it looks like it got it pretty right. So we have this one compared to this one. So there you have it. Some simple but yet very effective tips and tricks directly from Leonardo AI themselves. But thank you so much for watching this video. And please don't forget to hit that subscribe button because you'll be the first to know when all these videos come out. But until then, we'll see you next time.